I have just experienced the most dramatic action-packed KVK2 ever in my life. And here's what happened. So me and the leadership of Kingdom 2603, which is the kingdom that gave birth to my main account, formed the jump project, hoping to lead another new kingdom to glorious victories in KVKs once again. That kingdom is 2994. I jumped there with my F2P challenge account, fought for the leadership of the kingdom, and we succeeded. And we got stomped in KVK1 by a rising star kingdom. Because of the rising star status, almost every player migrated there for an easy KVK1 experience, which they have achieved. Bring back all KVK1 lit. But this story is not about my KVK1, it is about my KVK2. After KVK1 ended, we realized that we needed strong garrison and rally leaders to prepare for KVK2. Hence, I migrated my main account from 2603 to this new KD 2994 to be the main garrison leader. Now, my account is not the best, but I prepared myself as much as possible for this role, saving up resources and speed ups, expertising Wu Zitian as well as Constantine, and made a total of 4 open field marches. Alex and 2, Saladin Ethel Fled, YSG LC, also tested Kira by the way, being my 3 killer marches, and Constantine John of Arc being my 4th support march. At this point, I was quite excited about experiencing KVK2 all over again and were eagerly waiting for it to start. Finally, the fateful day has arrived. We were in seed B along with 2987, 2991, 92, 93, 96, 97, 98, and us. It was uncertain in the beginning that which kingdoms are allies and which are enemies. While all the talk was happening in the leadership level, I was focusing on the Eve of Crusade. One thing about Eve of Crusade is that you can really determine the activity and military of those KD and things were looking rough for us. After the first two stages, our kingdom was ranked first place, from the last that is, and no one was near in the top 10 individual ranking. I saw my kingdom was getting discouraged by it, so I pushed in this event as hard as possible so that I can relay a message to the people that there is still someone from your KD fighting for the top 10 spot. People saw me rising in rankings, this boosted their morality, and together we tried our best in stage 3, eventually landing 5th place in the ranking, with me being ranked 13 in the individual ranking at the end of the event. But then, the first day of KVK2 started, our allies and enemies have become clear, and the KVK map revealed itself. This was the map. Our allies were 87, 91, and 96. Hmm. 87, 91, and 96. Yes, we were surrounded by our enemies completely. 1 versus 2 was inevitable. As Sun Tzu said, know the enemy, know yourself. We chose to track to west side as those two kingdoms were least powerful according to the Eve of Crusade rankings. Even so, with having positional disadvantage, it was certain that we will lose 1 vs 2 and get locked up in our zone 4. After all, we had only 4 T5 players and our enemies had over 30 T5 players combined. But we set our goal. We set our goal to weaken those two kingdoms as much as possible to contribute to this KVK, help our allies to become the victors. As stated in our kingdom email, our task was to do everything beautifully and live beautifully. Eventually, the pass for opened and the fight started. First, we fought head on with 98. I was fighting on the northern front and my other T5 player was fighting in the southern front. We have divided our forces and struck the enemy from two sides. One thing was clear, that they had more T5 players on open field and I had to take on 6-8 to eight T5 players alone. When I was battling, I realized something. I remember when I was in my first KVK2, I used to fight behind my T5 players. Going in and out of the fight may be trade positive. But this time, I understood that I am now that T5 player, I am now the shield, I am the protector of the people, and had to man up against the enemy T5 players. 
So I did. I protected my people and fought ferociously as much as possible. Oh, one thing here to note is that the Lost Canyon ranking is a pretty good indicator of how good you are in open field compared to other peers. I was within the top 10 with my highest ranking being in the rank 2. So I knew that I was uh, stronger than them in open field. Hence, even though I was face tanking the entire ball, I was always trading positive. But doing this made me drain out of resources and speed ups pretty fast. I already spent 3 billion resources at this point and I was running low. Thankfully, the entire kingdom assisted me with resources. We were supporting each other in every possible way. The fighting continued and our flags touched for the first time. With us having so few T5 players, we couldn't really afford to garrison and lead rallies at the same time. My best equipment was on my garrison and I had no other fully legendary equipped marches for rallies. So we did the turn strategy. We defended. Defended and defended until they lost too much troops. This strategy was working because our garrison were trading extremely positive and we never lost defending. After they stopped trying to burn our flag, then it was our turn to counter strike. I equipped my best gear back to my Alex and started rallying. We pushed them back, zeroed many CTs, and after many hours of battle, we were winning and things were looking good for the first day of the past war. But then something unthinkable happened. All right, guys, uh, I'm gonna take a nap. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye bye. I went to bed, but I only slept for a few hours. Then came back, logged in, and saw. The Kingdom 93 has joined the battle. It was already 1 vs 2 and we were getting pushed back to our zone 4. Even though we fought non-stop for 4 more days, we were losing our ground against two kingdoms. The situation looked dire for us, but we didn't give up. We gathered ourselves for the last time, combined our forces and sneakily put our fort behind enemy lines, stole their hair run for rewards and prepared for our last stand. The epic last stand defending against two kingdoms have begun. And you already know what strategy we implemented here. It worked. We defended over 20 rallies and waited for our moment to counter strike. They stopped. The time has come. We pushed them back, zeroed many cities and successfully defended our position. But then, something unthinkable happened again. The next day, we couldn't defend anymore because we were simply running out. But our mission was complete. We rendered our enemies, then beautifully fell back into our zone 4 and waited for the pass 5 to open. Because when the pass 5 opens, our allies can start pushing from the top and we can fight alongside with each other. For the past 6 days of non-stop fighting, our kingdom were making headlines in the newspaper multiple times and even though we got locked up in our zone 4, our warriors were proud of themselves for their achievement. Peaceful few days have passed and on May 15, 2023, pass 5 opened. Our allies started to push from top. From west, 91 started to make a move. We also started to attack from the opposite side. Not to mention that our ally 91 is a very powerful kingdom, but also those two opposing kingdoms were drained so much fighting us. The fight ended quickly, we have defeated our enemies on the western flank. On the east side, also our powerful allies 87 and 96 fought the enemy's most powerful two kingdoms. The fighting was fierce, but eventually our allies came on top as well. The past 5 battle continued for one day but our opponent already admitted their defeat and our allied kingdoms were ready to claim their reward. However, huge plot twist, drama started to happen. The biggest two kingdoms in our allies started to compete in honor rankings, at least in my perspective. 
Some of their leaders said that we did not do anything in this KVK and we did not deserve a circle in our zone. And they were planning to occupy the rest of the circles for themselves for honor points. In addition, the occupation rewards were given to our opponents by our allies. To be honest, it wasn't fair for us. Some of our allies started to argue that we, 94, deserved more or less. Even some of them left the allied chat for the time being. As for us, we have exhausted ourselves fighting over 6 days non-stop and we were completely at the mercy of our allies. But then, another huge plot twist happened! Our ally 2987 caught, 2991 was plotting against them for the KVK star red-handed. 87 immediately allied with our enemies 2992, 93 and 97, thus 1 versus 4 has begun. 91 was overwhelmed and got quickly taken out by those kingdoms in a few hours. Tables have turned, new allies have been formed and they are now foreseeing the victory in this KVK. As for us, this is what happened. But the fire in our hearts hasn't died. Our bravery and fighting spirit has been recognized by others and we will be victorious in future KVKs.